Hey folks, it's your main man Sabado. I'm going to start today with uh, with a story. Um, and it's, it's just kind of a funny story, but really leads into what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Um, when I was a kid, again, when I say kid, I was in my 20s, I think. My dad walked in the room and he says, you know, son, you better straighten up. And I said, well, what? He says, you better straighten up. I said, why? He said, because if hell's any hotter than this, I don't think you're going to like it down there. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just talking because it was so hot outside. And, you know, it's funny because I just got back today from doing a little grocery shopping and it's 109 degrees outside. And it's even by my standards and as, as tough as I am from walking golf courses when it's hot, uh, this has got me in the house, even though I am smoking some ribs in the back. But anyhow, uh, you know, the good thing is, is that I... And I don't find myself out as long as I need to be or as I was before I retired uh, because the weekends, I don't have to go out on the weekends. I can do everything I need to do during the week and save the weekends for everyone else, which leads me into my topic, um, which is, you know, 10 things that 10 places to go that get easier once you once you retired things that you have to do. It just get easier when you retire. But before we get into that, I just I just like to start every video with telling you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a um, retired um, retired human resources executive with you know 20 plus years of experience on the other side of the of the line of you know the conversations that happen with organizations, whether it's around layoffs, whether it's around corrective action, whether it's around growth hiring how benefits calculate, and uh, just a whole host of anything that deals with your employment. I was the human capital person. I was responsible for that for a few large organizations. I was the, the head of human resources. So I had the have a, a fairly unique perspective as I talk a little bit about people's need to retire, uh, quite frankly. Um, and one of the big... Um, deficits that I find is, you know, when you're either in a role like that um, or just as I look across YouTube at retirement channels that, um, you know, there's there are not a lot of uh, people that look like me from up underrepresented groups um, and, and that don't just look like me, but, you know, from underrepresented groups that are talking about uh, retirement as a whole. And, you know, as I look around the country and I see where the country is, and I look at why we are where we are, um, I think a lot of it comes down to information. And so my goal on this channel is really just to create a channel of accessibility to different types of information, because uh, a lot of times if people don't see somebody like them doing something, then they don't feel like they can do it. Um, and there's the whole conversation about diversity and inclusion. And I, I believe diversity is the paint on the walls, but inclusion is the inclusion of the ideas. And a lot of times when people don't feel like their ideas are going to be included, um, they won't say anything or they won't aspire to do certain things. And so, you know, I, my goal is to help everybody that sees this channel, you know, just simply live your best life. Whether you retire now, 10 years, five years, or you work for the rest of your life, um, you know, retirement, just like money, is uh, a tool for you to really do the things that you want to do when you want to do them. And my goal is to help you get there and help demystify uh, some of the pieces along that journey. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm currently in the process of looking to involve others that maybe have financial backgrounds, uh, maybe as a financial advisor or an insurance person or something with a a strong technical background to help me understand and help the viewers understand um, some of the some of the minute details. You know, I, I say uh, I, my disclaimer every video is that I'm, I'm not a financial professional and I recommend um, going out and, and seeking the help of a financial professional. Um, I never even played one on TV, but, uh, you know, thinking about trying to find and solicit uh, professional uh, financial professionals that come on the channel to provide an even deeper level of information. Um, I think my story is a great story. Um, I think there are a lot of insights that I've gotten from my story, but I do think it is critical to have people that could give you some of the technical aspects 
um, or the specific aspects about, you know, how the money works and, and how you can get there. Because unfortunately, a lot of us uh, didn't grow up and this is across the board, didn't grow up with people helping us understand how money works um, and how to benefit from the different financial markets. And so um, we gain a sense of distrust for people that are in the one percent because they have all the tips and tricks to do different things with their money and we don't have access to those. And so the information is available. We just have to be able to find it. And part of my, uh, this channel is to help us find it. So if you think something like that would be helpful, just let me know down in the comments, because I do think that's the next iteration of the channel. Um, really, I'm thinking about having some guests on to talk about finance and, and, and how to provide not just wealth for them for yourself but you know generational wealth there's i know a few people that uh, I, I met a guy a couple of days ago that was putting money into uh, a trust for his family and so everybody in his family puts money into this trust and as this trust grows and they can pull from that trust for things like education and so on things that they maybe wouldn't be able to afford so again that's that's the real genesis and the, and the real impetus of this channel is really to help people uh, just get information that maybe they wouldn't otherwise feel like they have access to so then you know you're empowered to make those decisions and live life as uh, frank sinatra said live it my way and, and live it your way because it's when you get to the other side uh it's 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 just it's just a whole different feeling and I and, and my goal is to help you get there before you're forced into it, before you get laid off at an older age, before you get injured, before you get sick or anything like that. So on that note, we'll go ahead and get started with um, with the content. But and uh, you know and, and lastly I have to say this guy I think it's the right thing to do is if, if you like this channel anyway, please feel free to subscribe. Um, I'll leave the link below and you, you can subscribe. So 10 things that get easier uh, place to go to get easier retirement because we, we talk a lot about the money. We talk about, you know, going and traveling and, and doing the things that are fun. But there's a bunch of day to day stuff that gets easier as well. So I'll, I'll start with number one, which is, you know, shopping. When you go shopping on the weekends, remember, weekends are the time that 90 percent of the folks that are working have off. And so when was the last time you went to a store, wanted to go grocery shopping? That grocery trip took two hours. I go to grocery shopping on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and I'll tell you that I get in there, they stock the store on Tuesday night, so I get in, everything's there. When I go to the grocery store, it's usually me and maybe 10 or 15 of my closest friends. I get in and get out, buy a whole week's worth of groceries, and I'm finished. I'm back home usually within about 30 to 45 minutes. So it makes life incredibly easier. Um, and again, when we take a look at our time, that just takes, that gives us more of our time back. So we could perhaps do two things uh, in a day as opposed to just one. Because I know if you're like me, I was only getting one thing a day done um, when I was working. Uh, number two, um, just about everywhere in America has a Costco. And you could substitute, if you don't go to Costco, you could substitute Sam's Club. You could substitute whatever the operative big box store is that you go to to do uh, your bulk shopping. But Costco is a zoo. Every time I've gone to Costco, it was, what are you doing today? I'm going to Costco. Why? Because it would take two, three hours to get through Costco. Because if you're like me, I walk through every aisle because Costco always has something new. I look at the produce. Then I go back and I buy my toilet paper. I think ever since the pandemic, I'm still shell-shocked. I buy toilet paper and paper towels. I go all the way to the back, and that's usually in the back. And then I walk through the food aisles to see if there's any snacks that I need. And then I pick up my meats and my, my fishes and, and things like that. And then I take back anything I don't think I want to buy because every time I go to Costco, it's a $300 trip. But I'm able to do all that with what would take two and a half, three hours on the weekends, on Saturday and Sunday. It's only taken me an hour. I could get to Costco and get back and do a full trip in 30 minutes. If I look at a YouTube video, there's one guy on YouTube that has the daily deals or the monthly deals at Costco. Sometimes I can go and just pick up one thing uh, because, and, and, and d full disclosure, there's a Costco. They just built a new Costco right near my house. So it's it makes it a little bit easier. But on the weekend, it's still a two hour trip because there's just so many people. I go during the week, I'm in, I'm out, 
and I'm ready to do whatever it is that I need to do. So, uh, you know, so Costco gets a lot easier. But number three, getting gas. You know, how much of a pain in the butt is it that you finally get off of work, you're going to go see some friends, you're going to go to a street festival, uh, you're going to go fishing, um, you're going to go do whatever it is that you're going to do, and you, you know, you're down to three, three hashes on the gas tank, and you know you'll make it, but just in case you hit traffic, you don't want to get stuck. Uh, you go to the gas station. There's this huge line going to gas station. Gas station, and I'm not talking about the Costco cheap gas gas station. I'm talking about every gas station because guess what? Everybody and their brother is getting gas on the weekends. Why? Because that's when they have time to do it. So when you go during the week, you have your choice of pumps. At the gas station I go to, which is not far from my house, I go to this gas station and there's a specific pump that I like because I could go get the gas, and then if I want to go get a car wash, I could just go straight. If I want to go into the mini mart right, that's right there, I could walk right to the mini mart and I'm the first pump there, or I could get up and, uh, and, and get out quick, fast, in a hurry. So, But again, on the weekend, I never know what I'm going to get. Um, getting gas on the weekend is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> just kidding. Bad joke. Dad joke. I get it. Got to do it. That's what us retired guys do. So, No, but seriously. Um, I'm able to get in, get out because everybody's there on the weekend. So it gets, it gets easier. Um, number four, uh, playing golf, you know, golf is an expensive sport. I mean, it's, it's not over the top. I think in the Tiger Woods era, more people started playing and it, I think that probably held prices a little bit, um, because there's enough people playing, but you go play golf on the weekend, you're usually paying 40 to 50% more on the weekends than on the weekdays. And phew, try to get a time. Ever since the pandemic, getting a time at a golf course on the weekend is tough. So then you end up having to take what you get. And when you take what you get, you take what's left over. So you have tea times you don't want. Uh, all of the deals are taken because everybody takes them. But during the week, it's so much easier. Um, people that either played hooky to go play golf or other retired folks uh, to play golf. And, and it's just, it's more pleasurable. It's easier. You don't have people, you know, anybody out there that does golf. And please let me know if you're a golfer because, uh, you know, golfers unite. But, you know, the people, you don't worry about people behind us. We don't have people in front of us that we're waiting. They're slowing down for. And so rounds are, you know, either right on the number or just below about that four, four and a half hour mark. So it's, it's great. And you could get them early enough in the day to where you're finished before it gets too too hot, but late enough to where you don't have to set your alarm clock in the morning. But if you go on the weekends, you could log it out. Um, the next one is dentist and doctor's appointments. Um, I believe that's number five, dentist and doctor's appointments. You know, I was always, because I had so much going on during the week, whenever I'd schedule a dentist appointment, it was either late in the afternoon or it was on the weekend. And most dentists and doctors only have certain hours on certain weekends at certain times of the year. And everybody else wants those same times. And so sometimes an appointment that might be a routine appointment, uh, I might have to wait months for. Um, but if I go during the week, I could usually find a the time. They say, well, you know, we could get you in on Tuesday. Fine, I'll go on Tuesday. I won't go grocery shopping Tuesday. I'll go on Wednesday. But it's I can move things around, but it's a lot easier to uh, to get those appointments. Um, and again, all of these things, you know, they're not necessarily putting money in your pocket. But it, but remember, money is the tool for you to be able to spend your time your way. And so these are all things that are putting time back in your pocket because you can now schedule things when you want to schedule them as opposed to what's available. So you become you actually find yourself in a, in a little bit of control. Uh, number six. Um, deliveries. Uh, I remember, you know, we just had a mattress delivered yesterday, a new mattress. It's, it's nice. It's one of those beauty rest black, uh, quilted, uh, plush mattresses. I mean, this thing is the bomb.com. So, you know, people that are looking for a mattress, I recommend that mattress. It's, it's, as they say, it's off the hook. So we slept in it last night and it was some of the best sleep I've had in a long time. But anyway, I digress. Uh, but you can get deliveries during the week. They say you could take the first available delivery. Why? Because unless you have something else scheduled on that particular day, um, you could usually 
just take it. Just whatever the time is, the soonest time that's available, whether it's in the morning, whether it's in the afternoon, whether it's in the evening, but all of your deliveries, you can get them. And then the other one is, and I, you know, I didn't even think about this when I was writing my list is your Amazon deliveries, you know, right now. And I don't know if this happens everywhere, but one of the things that, that I hear about a lot is I hear about the, um, uh, Amazon deliveries getting stolen off of the porch. Well, why do they get stolen off the porch? Because you're at work. So while you're gone, you know, they say, what do they say? The, the cat's away, the mice come out and play. Well, when the owner's gone, then so are your Amazon packages. I know it's not incredibly clever, but, you know, you got to give me an A for effort, at least a B plus. But the, um, you, you're able to, you're there when your package is coming. If you have a ring doorbell, and I think I had a video the other day when it went off, but it'll say, you know, motion detec detected at the front door. Um, then you can go out and you get it right away. Um, and if somebody does take it and start to run, you can run behind them and trip them and then get your package and uh, go back in the house. So, uh, but deliveries, all kinds of different deliveries. It's easier to, to take delivery of things that are big, uh, especially things you have to sign for because uh, none of that stops just because you're retired. Um, number seven, going to the post office. I don't think, you know, going to the post office and in a lot of ways, going to the post office is like writing checks. You either do it or you don't because there's so many packaging services and there's so many mail outlets and there's so many ways to send things that you don't necessarily have to go to the post office uh, in order to send something. But there's a lot of times when it just makes sense to go to the post office. If you have a package and you don't know how much it costs, but you know the post office is going to be cheaper. Well, try going on Saturday. Then you're in there for half an hour, 45 minutes, just standing in line. Because I don't know if this happens to you. And please let me know if I'm the only one that this happens to. But it always seems like the person that doesn't have a clue how to ship a package usually represents that the, first, the three people in front of me. So what should have taken five minutes ends up taking 20 minutes. And I've got all those people in front of me. And it's, it's interesting because every time I go someplace, I always try to figure out how can I make this the most efficient. So somebody will have the same thing that I do. It'll take them 20 minutes to adjudicate. It'll only take me five uh, because I have my stuff ready. But again, as my wife would say, Sabado, not everybody's you. And I can live with that. But, you know, when you go during the week, you find that there's not as many people at the post office and the people are friendlier because they want to help you because there's nobody else there and they, they've got to be there. So uh, you, you get in there and you get out. Uh, number eight um, is going to the car wash. Um, there's a place in my town that does an excellent car wash. And you go, you tell them or you tell them because it's two, um, it's, uh, two ladies that own it. So you tell them uh, what kind of car you have. They take your money, they put you on a list, and when your car is ready, you drive your car up, and then they take it. It's a full detail every time. It's very inexpensive, but it's it's like going to the barbershop. Now, full disclosure, I haven't been in a barbershop in a long time, so I might be speaking about something I don't have full knowledge about. So um, please, if I'm wrong about the barbershop, let me know. I could take it. I'm a big boy. But, you know, when I went, the last time I went to the barbershop, a long time ago, I would go, you either take a number or you just sit down and then you go in order. Uh, it's the same way there. And what's nice is you have the opportunity to talk to other people. But that process on a day like today would take you about two and a half hours just because everybody's getting their car washed on the weekend. And so if you're able to go during the week, then you're in a whole different, you're in a whole different class of getting your car washed and you're in, you're out. You can go in the morning when they open, which is what I do. Uh, get in there, you're out. I mean, the minimum process is going to be about 45 minutes to an hour because they do a full detail. But again, you're not waiting two, three hours in the sun while they while they wash your car. So it makes it a lot easier. Um, this one, you know, they say a vice is an overextension of a virtue. So let's please not think of this as a vice, but going to the casino. Um, I like, I, I love playing slot machines. It's fun. I, you know, I don't get rich from it. I don't plan on getting rich from it, but I like playing new games. I like the bonus games and it's a time for my wife and I to be able to spend some time and, you know, play these, uh, play the slot machines. But the one thing we don't like about slot machines is the smoke. And there's a lot of smoke in, in casinos and particularly when they get busy, everybody's smoking. I don't know if it's because people are nervous 
or because that's one of the few places in California you can smoke inside. But uh, we, and we don't have where I live, we don't have any smoke free casinos. And so when we go during the day, there's usually not a lot of people there. We have the ability to get to the machines that we want. We're not waiting for a bunch of machines, but most importantly, um, there's not as much smoke in the air. And so you take that smoke out of the air, it completely changes the experience. And, you know, I, I'm sure somebody out there has a, has a thought on that because, look, if I'm the only person, if I'm the only retired person watching this channel, then, uh, you know, then I'm doing something wrong. So any of my any of my casino peeps out there, if you don't smoke, I mean, I guess if you smoke, then it doesn't matter. But if you don't smoke, tell me that you don't like going to smoke free casinos or when there's less smoke because you don't smell like smoke for two days. And I could wear the same T-shirt and do a video the next day. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and number 10 is home repair. You know, you have people come in and do home repairs. You know, fix it. We had somebody that had to come and fix a dishwasher, to fix our refrigerator. <clears throat> and so when they came, they when they scheduled, it's easy for them to schedule because they could pick any day of the week. You know, once, twice a year, I'm sorry, three times a year, we have a group come out that, one part of the year, usually around April, they check the air conditioner to make sure that's still functioning, uh, which I recommend everybody do. Get service regularly because what you don't want to do is be 100,000 degrees like it is today, have your air conditioner go out. Then you and 500 of your closest friends are trying to get the same appointment. Uh, but I digress. The uh, But we, have, we usually get our air conditioner service in April. We get our furnace usually around October. And then we have our plumbing inspected just to make sure there's no leaks. Um, you know, around that same October time frame. Uh, but the nice part is, is when I was working, I was waiting a long time for those appointments and I could only take what I got because I could only do it on the weekends. But now they can come on a Monday through Friday and they're usually open Monday through Friday. So a lot of times they're calling me telling me they had a cancellation that they are opened up and, and we can do it. So I think, uh, you know, when you look at those types of repairs or any types of repairs you do, you know, those are, those are, things that you can uh, that you can have uh, done during the week and not necessarily wait. So again, all of these things give you a little bit more a uh, little bit more time in your day because I the thing that we don't have in an unlimited quantity is time. You know, we've all most of us aren't working at the same job that we worked our whole lives. We went to new jobs for new money or more money and so we're making more money and I'm certainly not I certainly didn't retire making the same money I was making when I was 16 years old. Um, but you know, you can always make more money and you can always enhance your skills to make more money. But the one thing you don't have is time. And if you go down this list, and again, I always keep it real. I guarantee you, all of you have something on this list that you have to do. And you looked at this list and said, you know what, you're right. And if that's the case, let me know. Because, you know, I like to know when when things are accurate. Um, you know, you don't always have to agree. I just like them to be accurate. And all of us have, have had, wish we didn't have to spend as much time doing some of these and and wish we had some of that time back. And so that's one of those benefits that you that you get when you retire. And then there's there's one bonus uh, item that I had on here, which is um, visiting elderly and, and your older parents. You know, if you're at retirement or you're getting near retirement and you're like myself or my wife, you know, your parents are a little bit older. And um, the thing you start to realize when you have older parents is that they all seem strong and robust and, and ready to kick some butt and take some names. But you know that the reality is, is there's more time behind them than in front of them. And this is the time where uh, your older parents, if they were mean, they're nice, uh, they're insightful, uh, they actually want you around. And you have the opportunity to spend some time and, and, and pick up on things that maybe you didn't, you didn't get earlier because you were in the hustle and bustle. And so... Um, you know, I try to go and see my mom and take her vegetables uh, fairly regularly and, and make sure that we do some planning things and make sure that we're all squared away. And my wife does the same thing. She goes for uh, uh, about once a month and she goes and spends time with her family and um, just just to spend some time because, you know, it's it's unfortunately my, my father passed away in 2017. And uh, although we we had some indication that um, things were going on with them. You know, it's, 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 it's never, it's all, you never have enough time to, to either make up for lost time or to, 
figure things out that maybe you hadn't had the opportunity to discuss before. And it's so there's never a good time for that. So if you're able to create the time and if you're if you're retiring, then then you have the time. And and most of these things that we, we talk about, they're not they're not very expensive. You know, as you go back and you look at the list, there are things that aren't incredibly expensive to do. And, um, you know, it's it's funny how it's it's when you're working, you're spending a bunch of money on, on gas and on clothes and on lunches at work and. Uh, sometimes you got to pay for parking. There's all of these different. So, you know, that might get absorbed in your post return, but those are doing things that you want to do. So, again, I my goal isn't to try to talk everybody into retiring because I know everybody's not going to retire. And, and the fact is, is sometimes for some of us, work is a great distraction away from the rest of the stuff we have to deal with in life. I get it, folks. But um, the one thing that you don't get back is you don't get back time. So no matter how much of a distraction you're able to give or get from working or whatever the case is, you know, your most valuable resource is your time uh, on this earth. And you want to be able to do what you want to do when you want to do it. And if you choose to not do anything at all, you want to have the ability to do that. So, you know, so that's about all I had for today. Um, you know, again, if you if you like this video or found it helpful or, or entertaining in any way, um, you know, please leave a note in the comments. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make a list of these things. And I'm just just if you need a, a reference, something to look at, um, uh, put on your refrigerator. I'll put that down in the comments below. Or I'm sorry, in the in the description. And then the uh, the other thing I just want to remind everybody is that. I put up uh, content, um, long form videos like this on Wednesdays and Saturdays, um, just so you have something in the middle of the week and then you have something on the weekend. Um, if there's content or there's topics that you would like to have discussed um, that maybe you don't, you're unsure of or you just want a different perspective or you need somebody to do some research to help you better understand something, feel free to leave that in the comments. I, uh, I, I enjoy doing that. Um, and it helps me learn, you know, as we, as we go through it. Um, and if, if you would like more, uh, of the videos that I make to have, uh, visual aids that you can take and you can use, let, also let me know that in the comments. Um, and I'll, I'll start to incorporate those into, um, into the, into the videos, but that's about all I had. Um, I just have a good rest of your day and, uh, I will talk to you soon.